preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Greetings and welcome everyone. I am your host, Jacintha Stewart Francis. I want to say a very special welcome to you on this Sunday evening, September 24th, 2023. On behalf of the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, thank you for joining us via our Mission Life platform and also on YouTube and Facebook. You are kindly uh, reminded to share the link and invite your neighbors, your friends, and your family. Let us join together as we lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you for the blessings of the day. We thank you for allowing us to see the rising sun. We thank you for the food and the clothing and the shelter and all that we've been given from you. Thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, whom have given us salvation full and free. We ask for your total cleansing and we ask, O oh God, that you will raise us up so that we can be a people that will always share your everlasting gospel wherever we go. Bless this evening's service. Bless every participant, be with the technicians, and all that will be transpired here this evening. May it bring glory and honor to your name. I offer this humble prayer with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Our topic for this Sunday evening service is the heart of a soul winner. Yes, it is the heart of of a soul winner. The heart of a soul winner must always be honest and compassionate. The heart of a soul winner will always tell others about Jesus. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 15, it says that the heart of a soul winner will always shine for Jesus. Yes, we must shine for Jesus. We must be a, like candles shining for Jesus wherever we go. Amen. This evening, we know that good gospel music always lifts the heart. And I know for you, it, it does the same for you. And of course it does for me. We have this, uh, this evening our choristers and our musicians. We have sisters Karina Phillip, sister Jamie Jones and Jeffany Francois, 
they will be singing and praising the Lord in our song service. So wherever you are, let us lift our voices as we join them in praising the Lord. Welcome, sisters. Our first hymn is hymn number 286, Wonderful Words of Life. Seventy-two. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming. Two seven two. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming. To share the wonder.
212 tis almost time for the Lord to come.
amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for singing with us as we praise the Lord. God is good and his mercies endures forever. I want to say a very special thank you to the choristers and musicians and to all those who sang, praising God and lifting up his name in song. Amen. Remember our topic this evening, the heart of a soul winner. As we continue on this evening's service, remember to share the link. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend, invite them to be part of our service this evening. Now the heart of a soul winner must always be kind and patient. Yes, God calls us all to be kind to our brothers and sisters, even to those who are unkind. Let us tell them about Jesus and let us be patient with them as we share the everlasting gospel. To intercede on our behalf this evening, we have our dearly beloved Pastor Jerome Gordon. We welcome Pastor Gordon as he prays in Jesus' name. I invite you now to join me as we supplicate the throne of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed and sacred is your name. We come before you thanking you for your wonderful provision to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our sins. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that will never lose its power. We thank you for the preaching of the gospel that liberates men and women who have been bound and shackled in sin. This afternoon, Father, we pray that your power will rest upon this service. We ask, O oh God, that this service will be a life changer in many homes. We pray, O oh Father, that you will use this program to enlighten those who are blinded by the darkness of this world. We pray that you will use this program to break the chain of demonic darkness. There are some people, Father, who are watching now and their lives are being tied up by all kinds of sins and adverse and adversarial circumstances. We ask that as they watch tonight that something from the singing, something from the preaching, something from the moderating, something will touch their hearts that they will experience the love of Jesus in a brand new way. We ask that you will speak to your preacher and then speak through your preacher. Give him the grace to run the race. Give him the unction to function. May the sermon tonight be one that will reverberate in the communities. It will move across cyberspace with power. But more than that, it will have a wonderful transformative effect on all those who are watching. Father, we believe your coming is near. And so we ask that you will use this program to help men and women everywhere to be ready for the soon coming of Jesus when time shall crash with cataclysmic fury into eternity, when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. May all of us be a part of the living righteous that will rise to meet Jesus in the air. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Gordon. God's blessings to you as you continue to spread the everlasting gospel in this part of the vineyard, right here in Grenada, Cariku, and Petit Martinique. Thanks again. Let us turn our attention to the Word of God as I read to you our scripture reading. It comes to us from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 and the verse is 16. Wherever you are, you can turn to your Bible as we read the word of God together. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. And it reads, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Good is a reading of God's word. Remember our topic this evening? The heart of a soul winner. Remember to share the link. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends. We are on Mission Live. 
We are also on the platform YouTube and Facebook. Let us share and let others know what Jesus is telling us all this evening. We have with us Sister Patterson, who will bless our hearts with her gifts, the gift that God has blessed her with her voice. She will sing for us, and we give her our undivided attention. Welcome, Sister Patterson. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for your wonderful singing. God bless you as you continue to sing praises unto his name. Amen. We continue on. The heart of a soul winner is always humble. Yes, the heart of a soul winner is humble. The heart of a soul winner is lovely. The heart of a soul winner is friendly. 
Are you a soul winner today? Remember our topic this evening, the heart of a soul winner. This evening, joining us for the spoken word is our recently elected Communications and Religious Liberty Director. He is none other than Pastor Elvis Hille. Let us welcome Pastor Hille as he shares with us the spoken word under the topic, The Heart of a Soul Winner. Welcome, Pastor Hille. A pleasant good evening to everyone. We're glad that you can join us uh, this evening on Mission Live for our Sunday evening service. I'm glad that you have joined us and I invite you to like and share the page and invite others to come along so that we can have a jolly good time together as we study or as we share portion of God's word. And so I'm happy that you are with us this uh, evening. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks for being our God. We praise you and we magnify your name uh, for your goodness and your mercies towards us. And we thank you that we can come on this virtual platform to share your word. Oh God, we pray that we will understand your word. And we will not only understand, we will not only be hearers of your word, but we will be also doers of your word. Guide us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say, Amen and Amen. The topic of the message this evening is entitled, The Heart of a Soul Winner. The Heart of a Soul Winner. The Heart of a Soul Winner. And of course, we will stay or spend some time in the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew chapter 5. We're going to spend some time there so that you can take your Bibles. You can page it there or you can take your phone or your tablet or your computers. Whatever you have and you can turn there and we will stay there for the next few moments. Now, I want to say to us this evening that Jesus loves coming close to humanity. No, you didn't hear me. I said Jesus loves coming close to humanity. He loves coming face to face with people. And, and when he comes close uh, to or face to face with people, it is with the intention to make them better, to make them whole, to restore them, to heal them, to win them, to save them. Jesus loves coming close to people. This fact is demonstrated in the many passages of the Synoptic Gospels. However, I wish to focus a bit on uh, some selected verses from Matthew chapter 5. Which book did I say? Matthew. Which chapter did I say? Chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, we will recognize there that it refers to uh, as the summon on the mount, many people refer uh, to that chapter as the summon on the mount. This chapter is popularized for its radical sayings known as the Beatitudes. And by the way, the phrase Beatitude means uh, a state of being blessed. Come on there somebody. Uh, uh, an experience of ecstasy <laughs> or, or the believer's attitude of grace. Would you say amen? Beatitude. Every Christian should know the principle taught by Jesus on the hillside and seek to practice them. If he does not, 
the name Christian is in his case a hollow mockery. In other words, what I am saying as we look at the book of Matthew and chapter 5, every Christian, every viewer, every person should, should, should familiarize himself with the teachings of Jesus in this book and, and try to follow by the grace of God. Uh-huh. You see, my friends, this summon stands as the manifesto of the king, Jesus. The constitution of the kingdom of heaven is still the manifesto of the Christian today. Yes, because we are followers of Jesus Christ. The Sermon on the Mount was written for all of us. How many of us? The Sermon on the Mount was written for all of us. Now, the very first words about the Sermon on the Mount are introductory. But they are very meaningful. Go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1. And the Bible says, seeing the multitudes. Seeing who everybody? The multitude. How easy it is to slide over these words without thinking. Seeing the multitudes. The record says, why shouldn't he see them? Didn't the disciples see them? With his, with the eyes? Yes, maybe. But Jesus saw them with his heart and he wanted to help them. Would somebody say amen? This was the difference. This is the most times that ch challenge us rather. We see people. We see the multitude. We see the people for different reasons. We see people through different lenses. If you please... But like Jesus, we must see people not just with our own uh, eyes, but figuratively speaking, with our hearts as well. By this I mean, we must see people with love. We must see people with compassion. We must see people and be willing to help them. What do you say out there? Oh yes, the Bible says, seeing the multitude. Jesus saw the multitude. You see, in the Beatitudes, most of what Jesus said ran counter to the inclination of his listeners. They were proud of the Jewish heritage. They, were, they, they hated and despised the Roman rulers. And here comes Jesus on the scene to rearrange the way that they thought. To remodel the perspective. The, the, to, to rearrange the worldview, if you please. We are like Jews at heart. We are proud of our Christian heritage. We are proud of our Adventist heritage. We, we look down sometimes on others. We, 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 we feel like we are there. Come on, talk to me, somebody. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When we look at people, we must look at people the way Jesus will look at them. Jesus will look at people with a heart of compassion. We must not feel at any time that we have arrived in our Christian journey. We must not feel that we are better than people. We are, must not feel that we are superior Christians so that we cannot reach down. We cannot go down low and help a brother or sister or win somebody for Jesus Christ. So listen to Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, 13, 3, verse 3 rather, to 11. Jesus said, listen, I'm paraphrasing, but watch it. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed, or blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed, or blessed are the pure in heart. 
Bless or blessed are the peacemakers. Bless or blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Come on somebody, stay with the preacher. Bless are they when they revile and persecute you and say all manner of evil are against you falsely for my sake. Jesus says there is a blessing. Now the disciples and the Jews and the crowd and the multitude listening to the sayings of Jesus. They had a problem with that. Huh? Even the disciples must have been surprised. At what they were hearing. For, for the a Jew was, was pretty well satisfied with himself. Huh? A Jew was well pretty satisfied with himself. Can I speak to Christians this evening? Can I talk to you Adventists this evening? Can I talk to, to a Baptist, a Catholic? Can I talk to some church person this evening? You feel well satisfied with yourself. A Jew, he did not want to be poor in spirit. For that would mean that he was willing to be subjected to a superior authority. A Jew, he certainly might mourn because of the subjection of his people, but not for his own sins. He was not inclined to be meek either. He did not need to hunger and thirst after righteousness. He was already righteous. So the Jews thought and, and considered to be one of God's chosen people. And so on the list goes on. It just did not fit the, the, the outlook, the life, the thinking of a Jew. But still the multitude listened as Jesus went on, for, for in John chapter 7 and verse 46, the, no man has ever spoken like this man. Because you see, Jesus' intention was to get to the heart. Jesus' intention was to speak to the heart, speak to the condition, speak to their lives, speak to their thinking, so that they will see themselves not as proud, not as, as, as those who have arrived, but they will see themselves as sinners saved by grace. And all of us should see ourselves as sinners saved by grace. And because we are sinners, my friends, by the grace of God, as we look at others, we will look at them as sinners who are in the need of grace of, of the grace of Jesus Christ we will look at them as candidates for the kingdom of heaven that is the heart of a soul winner oh yes you see my friends when it comes to winning souls for the kingdom ah, uh, when it comes to winning soul for the kingdom of God we cannot look at the negatives. We cannot look at what this person did to me or what they said about me or what they, they, they think about me. We have to reach to the point where we can leave those things behind and focus on winning a soul for the kingdom of God. We got to leave those petty issues behind about who we are, how we stand, how good we look. We have to forget those things. And let me tell you something. Get engaged in reaching people for Jesus Christ. The multitudes were there. And Jesus continued. He continued in Matthew chapter 5, 23 and 24. Watch it now. We're getting deeper. He says to them, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and they remember that your brother has something against you. Hello? Hello? You brought your gift to the altar. You come to worship. You come to, to praise God. And you remember that your brother has something against you. Not you have something against your brother, you know. But your brother has something against you. Hello? He was speaking to the Jews. They were oppressed. And they were under Roman rule. And, and they felt, listen, listen, you see these Romans? We're not having anything to do with them. They are better off dead. 
We want them dead. For they abuse us and, and misuse us and ill treat us. But Jesus was changing the status quo. Come on man. That's what Jesus does. Jesus looks at everybody. He was helping them to come to the point where they have to put aside those, those, those baggages, put aside the past, put aside the differences. And if they claim to be Christians, if they claim to be his followers, if they claim to have the truth, if they claim to be serving Jesus, they must then go and reach others for Jesus Christ. That is the job. That is the heart of a true soul winner. He says... So you remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Then he went on to announce what some refer to as the impossible command. In Matthew chapter 5 uh, verse 38 to 41 he says you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but I tell you not to resist I tell you rather to resist an evil person but whosoever slaps you on your right cheek turn the other to him also if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic or your coat. Huh? Let him have your cloak as well. And whosoever compels you to go one mile. Go with him another. What? Listen, listen. This was hard saying. Imagine, imagine. Jesus was speaking to us today. So the neighbor, the neighbor say all kind of things about you. I ain't have nothing to do with her. Uh, the, 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 the co-worker gives you some problems. Hello, you know, I push her aside. Come on, I'm speaking to Christians now. I'm speaking to those of us who are called by the name of Jesus. When people, when people mistreat us and ill treat us and say all manner of evil against us, what do we do? Still an opportunity for us to witness to them. So, 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 there was a Roman law. That, that, that the Roman soldier could compel any man to carry his gear for a Roman mile. A little more than an English mile. A mile is a long time. So the Roman gears were very heavy. And imagine you have to carry that for, for a mile. You just say, hey you, pick it up. Carry it. He can command you. Huh? That's it. But my friends, my friends, for us, let's put it today. For us as Christians of today, it may not be too difficult to cleave. At least in spirit to the principles stated in the Summer on the Mount. We know also that we well will never have to carry a Roman soldier's gear. Huh. However, we are confronted daily with all kinds of circumstances. And for us, the question is, what would we do? And better still, what would Jesus do? The incredible, the impossible. Jesus is saying, comply. Huh? Well, my friends, this is not easy. In this extraordinary chapter, Jesus is giving masterly lessons to the multitude. He knows that among those attending the synagogue or the church week after week, there are hypocrites. Huh. Did I say that? Yes. They are liars, adulterers, idolaters, drunkards. Wine beavers, if you please. Sinners. Spiritually sick people. Persons who were hurt. Who were used and abused. People who were slandered. People who were persecuted. People who were poor. People 
who are bitter enemies with each other. And he still has the courage to mention it and to talk to them face to face with the intention to win them. With the intention to save them. With the intention to offer them a new way of thinking. A new way of dealing with persons. A new way of living. A new way of behaving. A new way of practicing Christianity. Oh my friends. Money, gold and silver are very important. Everyone on earth is seeking a more prosperous financial life. So Jesus expresses his opinion about the real treasure and speaks about that about the one that 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 neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. The one that thieves do not break through nor steal. He speaks about the eternal kingdom where our hearts should be. Oh, how beautiful it is to discover God's tenderness for his creatures. Fowls of the air, fed by the heavenly father and the lilies of the field he, he made so beautiful that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. How precious are his words of encouragement and trust when he declares in Matthew 6, 24, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. But then before that, in verse uh, 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 so Matthew 6 and verse 33, he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see, my friends, for Jesus, no doubt God should be first place in our lives. Oh, there was someone who is in tune with God. Someone who is seeking after God. Someone who will put God first. And if God is first in your life, then my friends, you will fall in line with his principles. You will fall in line with his precepts. You will fall in line with his word. You will fall in line with his work. My friends, we have too many Christians, too many professed Christians, and may I say, too many professed Adventists who are just on the fence. Warming benches in churches. They have time to gossip. They have time to know everybody's business. Come on, am I speaking the truth? They spread on Facebook and, and Twitter and Instagram everything that is happening. But they have not taken the time eh, to share with somebody a verse of scripture. They haven't taken the time to share a word of hope with somebody. Come on people, get busy as Christians. We are called to win souls for the kingdom. Oh, as I bring it home, every detail Every verse of this sermon on the mount is a major lesson. You read it. Thoughts of those who pretend to be Christians today. Then in Matthew chapter 5, as I come down closer to the end, Matthew chapter 5, verses, verse 43 to 45, here Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Whoa, whoa that's a big one. Watch it now. But I say to you, love your enemies. Whoa, I wish I had time to talk about that. Love your enemies. That's, 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 that's Christianity at its core. That's the acid test of Christianity. You know, it's easy to love people when they're nice and when they're good and when they're laughing with you and rubbing with you, when they say things to please you, when they're all good. It's easy to, to like them and to so-called so love them. But when, when you hear, they get you on the other side. It's a different story. But Jesus says, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and
persecute you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, hear it. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And then he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. When life goes on smoothly, it is comparatively easy to talk about loving and blessing people who are doing good. But when we are the victims of those enemies or the wrong deeds, hello, then it is a different, different story. My friends, as I conclude this evening, the heart of a soul winner, the reality question is, are you ready for, to face such tragedies as Jesus when he had faced them? Did he not allow himself to be flogged? Broken and, and finally crucified, naked on the wood of Calvary, on a cross, if you please. Yet for all, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yet for all, he kept true to his mission that says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save this. What was lost? That's the business of Jesus. Oh yes, Jesus is the true soul winner. And he invites us to be like him. To be like Jesus. So that by the grace of God, as we see the multitude, we will be able to see them as Jesus sees them. The heart of a soul winner is a heart like Jesus. Somebody say amen. The heart of a soul winner is a kind is a kind heart the heart of a soul winner is a compassionate heart towards others the heart of a soul winner loves his enemies did i say that yes the heart of a soul winner is 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 a soul that does not uh, see how bad people are but, but sees how good and how better they can become to the grace of Almighty God. The heart of a soul winner is in tune with people. The heart of a soul winner is always thinking of the good of people. To bless people. To uplift people. To care for people. Today, God is calling us to be like him. If God's people would really follow the principles of the summon on the mount, all of them, then listen what the prophetess Ellen G. White says in her book, Testimonies for the Church, volume 9, page 189. Hear what she says. You can read it. It's on the screen. She says, if we would humble ourselves before God, and be kind. Be what everybody? Be kind. And be courteous. Watch the next word. And be tender hearted. Watch the next word. And be pitiful. There would be 100 conversions to the truth. Where there is now only one. Wow, wow, wow. That's the heart of a soul winner. Yes, you could know the doctrines. Yes, you could know the Bible from the inside out. Yes, you can know the rudiments of teaching and preaching. Yes, you can know it. But I repeat, she says, if we would humble ourselves before God and be kind and courteous and tender-hearted and pitiful, the results will be there would be there would be 100 conversion 100 persons 100 souls converted to Christ converted to the truth where there is only no one the challenge this evening the challenge of our savior confronts us all there is no one 
who cannot demonstrate the principles of the summon on the mount in his or her life. And in doing so, find wide open avenues for leading souls to Jesus Christ. Why not resolve tonight? Why not resolve now to put this principle into practice immediately? Why not decide now to let Jesus into your hearts? Every viewer, every listener, every boy, every girl. If you claim to be a Christian, Seventh-day Adventist or whatever denomination, why not allow Jesus Christ to come into your hearts one more time? So that his life can be lived out. We can emulate him. We can practice the principles he shared with us. On the summon. And if perchance you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. Oh Jesus is always willing to accept you and to receive you. He sees you just as he saw the multitude. You might be lame. You might be broken. You, 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 you might be downtrodden. You might have been used and abused. But Jesus sees you tonight. Maybe you feel like giving up. Maybe, maybe, maybe you tune on just because. But, but Jesus wants to save you. That's his business. He is a true soul winner. He wants to win your heart. He wants to win your soul. He wants to save you. He wants to give you salvation. If you have not surrendered to Jesus, why not go to on the screen and fill up one of our cards? Or why not just give us a call? Any pastor, any Seventh-day Adventist elder, why not call me, call somebody and say, I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be like Jesus. Help me by the grace of God. You know that right now, you let Jesus into your hearts and trust me, he will save you and he will save you now. May God bless you as you continue to make that decision for him. May God bless all of you as we continue to practice the principles of Jesus Christ found in his word. May God bless you. May God bless you. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks for the example of Jesus. Thank you that he sees us, every one of us, just as how we saw the multitude. He sees us in our low estate. He sees us in our struggles, in our dumb moments. He sees us. And for this, we are very encouraged. Thank you for those who have viewed online tonight. And we pray, God, that by the grace of God, as Christians, we will, we will arise, we will shine, we will live out the principles of Jesus taught in the Beatitude, taught in the Summon on the Mount, so that by the grace of God, we can be lights, we can be salt of the earth, we can reach people, we can save people for Jesus Christ. I pray for somebody tonight who have indicated, who, who have decided, or who is still deciding, that he or she wants Jesus in his or her life. Wants to surrender. Oh God, visit such a person and make it possible now. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' magnificent name, let everybody say amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Hiller, for the spoken word. Let us remember, friends, that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Wherever we go, we must have the heart of a soul winner. We must remember that even as we live for Jesus, that we must have heaven in view in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. We want to thank you so very much for joining us this evening. Let us remember that God is always with us. His grace and mercy is ever present, and he loves us irregardless to who we are. Let us turn our hearts to him always. 
We want to give you just a few reminders. Even as we go, we want to say a very special thank you to all those who participated in our service this evening. To our choristers, thank you, and, and the musicians, thank you so much. To Pastor Gordon for the prayer, thank you, thank you, thank you. And to Pastor Hilaire for the spoken word, thank you so much. And we thank Sister Patterson for the song, God's Blessings, as we continue to work for him. Here are a few announcements and reminders. Remember to join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. And also on Sabbath at 6 p.m. for an hour of prayer. The Zoom ID 874-9040-9613. And you can also join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon and 1 p.m. on Sundays and Thursdays. Our upcoming programs, Tuesday, Pastor's Corner at 11.30, and there will be a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. Our Youth Live Unplug on Friday evening at 7 p.m. Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. And this will be followed by our AY service at 4 p.m. Join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada as we continue our Sunday evening service. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings of this evening session. We thank you for the spoken word. We thank you for those who sang and for the prayer. Lord, we pray that our hearts will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh God, help us, dear Lord, to have the heart of a soul winner. Help us to be kind. Help us to be patient. Help, dear Lord, that our light will shine wherever we go, whomever we meet. Lord, we know that times are hard and things may be hard, but God, may we truly represent you in everything that we do. Thank you, Lord, for seeing us through this uh, evening service. And even now, as we end our service, may you bless each heart. Thank you for all those who joined us via the Mission Life platform on Facebook and YouTube. Take care of us all we pray. Whatever our needs are, Lord, we put it into your hands. And even as we face a new week, Lord, we face the week with all that you have given us, all the strength, all the power, everything that is needed, we are certain that you will provide it because that's who you are, our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. And thank you, Lord, for all that you continue to do for us. May we continue to let our light shine so that others will see you in us as we shine for you. Thank you for blessing us all. I offer this humble prayer in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. God bless you. Goodbye. Oh